talked over the last few months yeah. about this technology. So give some perspective on the innovation and how this came to light and why you thought about, hey, I'm going to project the phone on my arm. Yeah. Like, where did that come from? Well, basically, the name is Secret. Uh, we couldn't spell it correctly because the name was already trademarked. Uh, initially, it was a secure application, like a WhatsApp, a secure and encrypted application. And because we couldn't afford it, uh, we couldn't have a cloud system to store all your data on the cloud. And basically, we thought that it could be interesting to have a secure hard drive. Philosophic, philosophically speaking, having, having it on the wrist, to me, it was important. Then you have your, all your personal data close to you. So that was the initial purpose of the secret bracelet, being a secure hard drive. And one day, we thought, well, it could be really interesting to see what's inside the bracelet, but without a real screen. So the first idea we had was like a hologram technology, but today it's not efficient and it wasn't the good way. And then we discovered the Pico module and uh, long range proximity sensors. Um, now to be clear, to detect the finger, it's more accurate to use two cameras, which we are doing. Um, and this is how we came up. Mm -hmm. And what was your original business case? I mean, how did you think about that? Like this will be used in this industry or this environment. Uh, what did you see? To me, first of all, it's cool. And this is, this is the first environment. It's just a, a good gadget and a good accessory and something that you never saw before. And yesterday we released some pictures of the first sexy prototype. And I have to say, when you try it on your wrist, it's, it's well, the future is here and it's really interesting. Uh, but of course, every time I explain or I show the video to someone, he founds a new use case. So um, we spoke together of the, for example, the manufacturing environment. When you have a worker who gets his, his hand tied, he can, you know, check uh, some instruction here or receive some orders or to see exactly what's the process. You can use it when you're playing a game. Uh, we get some firemen really interested because when they are in really warm environments, they cannot use some devices with real screen. Uh, I also got some, you know, exchanges with some uh, administration worldwide to use it in space for the astronauts. Uh, I have to say, I'm sure you have ideas that, you know, never popped up. So um, it's, it's pretty unlimited. and. Um, also, we patented, of course, the concept and the technologies of the bracelet, but we have some other accessories because the bracelet is only the first piece of a whole ecosystem based on Pico projection and finger detection. And for example, the bracelet, you will be able to take off the up part to put it on something that we call the base and then transform any surface into a touch screen. Interesting. So have you thought through business models for this? I mean, obviously, you know, the business make money yeah. to pay for the pay for the cost of the development, things like that. What, what type of thought have you had around business models? What we have today uh, is that we have a huge community already and we made a crowdfunding by ourselves, not via Kickstarter, for example. We can make it uh, ourselves. Uh, today, I have a, a list of potential uh, pre-orders from the B2C market of 200,000 people. And if I addition, and I like to give this number, so don't be scared, but when on the B2B market, we have 2,000 companies that fill the survey on the website. They are coming from more than 100 countries. And if you addition in a low hypothesis, there are potential pre-orders. We reach something like 156 million of bracelets. We are not going to produce 156 million of bracelets, but it's just to give you an idea of the market. Mm -hmm. And with a retail price of 300 USD, we have the business model. Yeah. And what types of partnerships are you looking at as well? I mean, obviously, you can talk to the phone manufacturers. I mean, yeah. what types of partnerships are, are of interest and what's come up in the beginning? Today, we know that we have the B2C market. So the first immediate short-term partnership we're looking for and that we have actually is on the manufacturing aspect. Because today, we, we had a year ago the, what we call POC, so proof of concept number one. We're going to have, before the end of the year, proof of concept number two. And the idea is to have POC3 by quarter one or two 2017 to go in the industrialization and production by summer of next year. So we already have some deals with the manufacturers and I'm not here for nothing, but yeah. uh, we're yeah. always open for that. Sure. And what, what do you see the product being in, in three to five years? I mean, it's a little different than what you originally intended because of all the use yeah. cases and, and requests coming in. But three years from now, five years from now, next year at this time, what will you be talking about? Definitely, we're going to, to talk about a standalone machine and again, a whole ecosystem. So uh, it's going to be crazy to mix the bracelet plus the base, for example. Uh, it's going to be smaller, of course, more efficient. And I have to say, um, except knowing that any surface is going to be a touch screen, we don't know yet. And this is what is interesting. Mm -hmm. So any surface, brick wall, yeah. floor, car. Well, something. yeah, well, our CTO even tried it on his cat and it worked. <laughs> Because today what you need to know is that the Pico module technology uh, can you know, project some full HD. So the, the main issue we have and the main challenge we have to face is the brightness. 
it's not the keystone correction, it's not the finger interaction, it's the, the brightness of the image and we're working hard on it and uh, you may see in the next weeks the image that we have today, um, we are only using 30% of the machine and of the Pico module. So we have some margin and I'm, I'm confident on the fact that we can have a bright image on any surface, even on a cat. Even on a cat. And we've talked about use cases, healthcare, manufacturing. Yeah. Uh, what, where do you see the biggest opportunity for the product? To me, the biggest opportunity is you uh, and your arms, because you basically all have two, which is interesting for me. Um, but, you know, the manufacturers can be really interesting. We also have some contact with uh, some car companies because for the drivers to stay his hand on the wheel but receive some information in front of him or for the kids on the back of the seat when they are bored, they can project something, they can play a game like Angry Birds or they can watch a movie. So um, everything is open and this is what is really exciting and interesting in the bracelet. I think we've talked about healthcare as well and things like that. Any place where somebody's working with their hands and yeah. can't necessarily pick up or manage a phone, they can interact on their arm. Yeah, absolutely. And to stay on this, uh, we received many, many emails and I'm sorry we cannot answer all of them, but one of them was from a, a mom and uh, he, her son was uh, autist. Correct in English? Artist? Autist. Yeah. yeah. Autistic. Autistic, yes. Yeah, autistic. And the whole day she was only speaking and communi communicating with him via an iPad because he only answers to drawings. And he to she told me that she was not you know, able to communicate with him when he was taking a shower. So what would be really interesting, because it's water resistant, it's for her to have, a, of course, a daily usage of the bracelet to communicate with uh, her child. Or for example, we have people in wheelchair, when they're using their wheelchair, they have to hand carry their phone. It's not really, you know, it's hard. If they have something that projects here, it would be really m much more easier for them. So one of the questions I have when you think about innovation, how different is the product today than it was when you started? I mean, there's been a lot of evolution there. Yeah, it's a working. A lot of use cases. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a, a great uh, change for us. Um, now we know, for example, that we can make what you used to do with your smartphone. So we can have the, you know, the, the double tap or we can have the zoom in or zoom out. We weren't sure about that. And again, in two or three years, you know, the, it's going to be brighter. It's going to be more efficient. It's going to be smaller mm -hmm. as well. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to move forward on this. Yeah. Any, any other products? that you've thought about and leveraging the same technology and extending into industry? I think at, at the end, we are only going to have this module uh, based on Pico projection plus uh, finger detection, and then we'll be able to glue it absolutely everywhere. So if you have any idea, I'm open to it. Yeah, and for everybody paying attention here and listening, uh, what's the availability of the product and how can they reach you and, and get the product, use the product, proof of concept, test it? Yeah, so the proof of concept is going to be ready before the POC2 is going to be ready before the end of this year. And we target to, to deliver it, so the final product to the first customers at the end of next year.